Hello, hello guys, it's YJ here, coming back with a redstone video today. I'm just gonna do a tutorial for the design I showcased recently. So, start out, you're gonna need a lot of junk items just for renaming and throwing in the uh, item sorter. And those are all the relevant redstone resources you need. You don't actually need different colors of wool, I just like using it because it makes the circuits a little bit simpler. And everything else is bare minimum. Probably gonna want some scaffolding blocks if you're building this in survival, but I think that's pretty standard. Anyway, let's get on with the tutorial. Okay. So, first thing we're gonna be doing is building the memory circuit. So you're gonna need all those resources for this stage. Starting out, just gonna put four blocks along like that. Four redstone blocks along here and four downward facing sticky pistons above those. Repeaters on these four blocks going into another row of blocks. Torches on top. Blocks again. Torches on the sides of these and on the top. And finally, one last row of blocks with torches on top of those. Okay, so that's the memory circuit done. This is just a little memory cell with an extra row just to carry the signal up. It's a nice little compact one wide design, can go beside each other without interfering. Okay, now the second step, we're going to be building the item sorter. So you're going to need all those resources. Uh, this, these resources aren't on top of the initial one, this is just what you need for each stage. So you're going to start out two chests like that. Hoppers running along into the bottom one, and hopper running into that. Then you want a row of four blocks here, comparators on top and hoppers facing into those. It's important that those aren't just facing down into the row below. And definitely not facing into each other either. Then you want a row of blocks here. Come down below. You want to put three blocks like that, repeaters on these ones. And you're going to continue this the whole way along, so three more repeaters there, three more blocks. Back here you want torches there, and then dust on all of this up here. Pretty standard item sorting design, doesn't have overflow protection, but that's not really necessary for this design. So, I believe that's everything apart from this last four hoppers right here. So those are going to flow in here, like an overflow chest, basically. Okay, so that's everything for that step. Move on to the next state logic and the output line, and this is going to be the little bit more complicated part of it. I guess I should look at that for a little bit longer. Those are all the resources for this stage. Nothing crazy complicated, but... Uh, this bit took a lot more figuring out. So that's everything for the output. So this is where once you've entered your correct combination, this line is going to flash. It's not going to turn on permanently, it's just going to flash. So you'll need to deal with that when you're thinking about how you want to open your door. And I can show you a simple circuit for dealing with that later. Okay. So down here, you want three blocks and one there with a torch on. You want two repeaters and some dust. You want a redstone block there with a sticky piston right above it. Oh, sorry, I'm messing up a little bit here. Block there, redstone torch dust, and you want the redstone block here with the sticky piston above it. There we go. And block, and repeat.
repeater. Okay. So as you can see, that's going to activate when the output is, output comes in, and that's just going to help with resetting. We'll deal with that later on. Okay. Now on the these three blocks of the item sorter, you're going to want downward facing pistons, sticky pistons with blocks along those. And I'm just going to put more temporarily, so that's where they're going to be when they're extended. And you're going to put two blocks here, and one here. You want torches on all of those. Get rid of these temporary blocks, and repeaters on these. So you can see when those blocks extend down, these repeaters will all get powered. And these all need to be set to two ticks of delay, because otherwise they won't pick up the torch signal when the blocks come down. Over on this end, you want a piece of dust. Then you want to go across like this. Dust here. Put a block with two repeaters running into it. And from this one, you're going to want more blocks. Block here with dust. Block there. Repeater dust, and a block there. So this is just carrying the signals over into these memory cells so that they can set or reset depending on which item sorter line gets activated. Next one over, block here, there. Want some dust up there, and two repeaters running out. Now for this last one, Put a block right there. Zigzag some blocks around like that. Dust on those three repeaters so it doesn't interfere with that. And then we're going to go block, block there, not there, and repeater running into that. So as you can see, they all, everything is running into one of these memory cells, and that first bit we built runs all the way over here into this last one as well. Okay, so that is the next state logic done and your little one block output there. So we're going to move on to the next step. Next step is going to be the reset circuit. You're going to need these blocks. This one's pretty fast, pretty simple. Okay, so you want to come up here to the top row so this is going to reset the memory cells anytime you enter a digit that's not in your combination. Four more blocks there. Dust. So you can see this is running into all of them and now from this overflow, so this is where the incorrect digits are going to go. I'm going to connect that up. More dust. Peter there. Now we want to go up to the top. Peter coming out, or a comparator coming out of that block. And we want a sticky piston going down. Oh, one lower actually. Block and sticky piston. Dust on top, so when something comes in, that'll give it a nice pulse and reset all the circuits. Okay, that's the reset circuit done, and the last thing we're going to build is the keypad. And this is going to go outside our footprint, so technically the lock itself is done now. So if you were to throw the items in the correct order into this, then it would activate. Not counting the fact that we haven't actually set up a code yet, but we'll do that after the keypad. So, anyway. These are the resources you're going to need for the keypad. Just lots of junk items, basically. You can you can use whatever. This is just the minimum, and you're going to want an anvil, probably. I'll explain that in a second for resetting or renaming the items. Okay. So we're going to come up here and. Uh, as you can see, you can build the keypad in a couple of different orientations. I'm just going to build it this way because I 
just because I feel like it. But anything that hooks up to this, uh, making sure that they don't accidentally go into these ones first. So as long as they end up in this one, doesn't really matter where you build it. You don't even have to have a keypad. You can just have like a drop shoot, whatever you feel like making. So I'm just going to put these blocks along here. This is where my keypad's going to be set up. Two more hoppers. Um, droppers facing in here in a 3x3. Three three. There we go. Get rid of these guys now. You want to make sure that you don't leave the block there because then when this is on, it'll lock up the hoppers and mess with your circuit. Okay. So I'm just going with a standard computer numpad, so it's going to look like this. And if you want to make it bigger or smaller, that's up to you. I just like the 3x3s, I think they look neat, but you could easily add in a 0 or 2x2, two two, whatever fits your, uh, whatever suits you. So top right, that's going to be 9. It's got all out of order, there we go. 9, 8. Seven over the side, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, now I'm going to cover this up with a row of blocks, and this is important. You want to make sure that you don't just put the buttons directly on because then they'll activate all the droppers around them. And then on this side, we're just going to make sure that none of the items can fly out. Can do this with whatever blocks, doesn't really matter. Um, can have it see through, put glass on if you want to see them flying out, but just as long as that's the bare minimum for what you cover. And again, make sure you don't put any blocks on that side so they don't interfere with the torches. But if you want to fill in the corners, that's up to you. Uh, not really necessary though. Okay, so that's the keypad done, and what we need to do now is actually set up our code. So you're going to need a stack plus 24 items, I'm just using coal, you can use seeds, which is what I suggest, because it's nice and easy to get, or iron ingots if you've got an iron farm, doesn't really matter. Okay, so you're going to need, split that up into four piles, you're going to need four stack four piles of 18, and these are going to be the four digits in your code, so I'm just going to use the same one as before. I'm going to go four, three, two, and one. You can do letters, you can do names, you can do literally anything just as long as it matches what's in your keypad. Um, colors, you can do super long complicated codes so that people can't accidentally throw things in. You don't even need to use the same item, you could use seeds, coal, iron, and gold, just whatever you feel like. Um, I'm just going to rename these to something, not strictly necessary, but it's just nice in case you accidentally drop coal in there for whatever reason. And now this side, on the right side, is going to be the first digit of your code. So actually, let's go one, two, three, four this time. So you're going to put your filler in these four, and then you're going to put 18 in there. Uh, it's important that you put a, at least this many in, because if you put any less, then items are just going to build up in here, and the, it won't work until there's 18 in there. One, two, three, and four. Okay, there we go. Now our lock should be working now. And what I'm going to do, just so we can test it out, is run a little line up here. You just grab a lamp so we can see when the door actually unlocks, or when our lock unlocks. And it's important, you do need a repeater here, because when it unlocks, you can see that's a signal strength of 1 right now. When the door unlocks, the pulse here is only going to be signal strength 1, so unless you actually have your device right here, uh, if you put redstone dust there, it won't carry any further, so you're going to need to boost the signal strength back up with the repeater. But I don't think that's really a big deal, and 
you've got a bit of room up here in the footprint if you wanted to put something in to, to boost it up or do anything else with it. But I'm just going to be sticking with this for now. Connect it up to our lamp. Okay, and then our code is 1. So you can see... Okay, that's it reset now. So 1. And... 2. Oops, I must have missed something. Give me a few moments, and I'll check it out and see what I did wrong. Okay, so I've done a bit more testing. I've figured out there's actually two issues. Uh, one of them's pretty minor, just something that I messed up. This repeater right here should be on two ticks of delay rather than the default delay. Uh, that just messes up the reset circuit, so it wasn't resetting properly. So make sure you fix that. I'll try and add an annotation so you should notice but uh, just so you know. And the other one was something a lot more obscure that took me quite a bit longer to figure out. It's the first time it's happened to me in all the other test builds I've been doing. And it's got something to do with items and NBT tags. I don't fully understand it, but I have a, I have a rough idea and I'll try and explain it. So basically you can see that I've got two different stacks of items and they look identical, same number of NVT tags and everything, but they don't stack. And I'd imagine that's something to do with me cloning over items from the previous builds and not just renaming them in an anvil fresh every time. So for you, it shouldn't be an issue. If something like that does happen and your item filters aren't working because items won't stack, test it out, see if they don't stack. If they don't, either try again, try renaming them again, or the only other thing I can suggest is just not using renamed items, which is unfortunate, but there's not a whole lot you can do to get around the bug if it is still prevalent, um, or if you're still having issues with it. Anyway, uh, yeah, as I said earlier in the video, you could just use different items, like different colors of wool or dye in each one, because those are less common items and they won't stack. Anyway, let's get on with actually testing it and showing it off and seeing how it works. So, in its reset state, this should be off. So, if all these torches are on, then just press any of the buttons that isn't the first digit in your code and everything should reset fine. So, okay, it's one. And you can see it switch to that one being off. And two. See it switch, that one being off. Three. That one's off. And the last one, four. And you see that flash up, so that's the output. And it resets back to this one again. So, as for how long you have to wait between pressing the buttons, I would suggest just waiting until you don't hear pistons moving anymore. That's normally a fairly good indicator. You can go a little bit faster. Uh, there's very little you can do to break the design, even if you spam items through it pretty fast, it's reasonably reliable, I think. So um, if you press any other button, it'll just reset again, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. If you go a little bit too fast, you'll just have to start over, but I don't think that's too big of a deal. So yeah, I'm fairly happy with the design. I hope you like it as well. If you got any questions or you want me to explain parts of it or anything like that, then let me know for sure. And I'll make a follow-up video or I'll reply in the comments or with screenshots or whatever is applicable. But I think that's about it for today. I don't think I have anything else to say. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good one.